Rubbish in, rubbish out. Good. What man fill the mind with will be clear in word, in action. And this is the statement I wanted to make. You just need to be around people to know where they are spiritually. Isn't it true? What man fills the mind with will be clear in word and in action. You cannot hide it. When you switch on the computer and you look for some stuff and there's a problem there, it manifests. It, it wouldn't go away until you fix the problem. Now, let's read from the Word of God. And, and you know me by now. To me, the Word is what it's all about. But the Spirit, 1 Timothy 4 verse 1. But the Spirit saith expressly that in latter times some shall fall away from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. You know, when I read this and it fell in my heart during my time of preparation, I was thinking about the, the time that we've just had, Passover, and how Passover has been diluted and things allowed in that did away with the importance of the occasion. People are so focused on a different kind of celebration that they are forgetting what this whole season is all about. And I want to begin to encourage you. It is time that we begin to acknowledge, first and foremost, that we are in the latter days. Do you believe that? We are in the latter days. And the scriptures, or rather the timelines, if you follow through on God's timeline, uh, the rapture and the beginning of the tribulation could be any time from now. It is so much closer. We are in the last year of the Shemitah. We are now coming into the first year of the next Jubilee, which is begins just after September. There's so many things that point towards the real end time. And as believers, we should need to get awake to these things. When I read this portion of scripture, it is more relevant now and as much as it was then it, we need to pay attention to it. It says, but the Spirit saith expressly that in the latter time, some shall fall away from the faith. No, we see just that. And they're not going away from the faith, denouncing Christ as the Messiah. I want you to get that. They don't stop preaching what needs to be the message that needs to be presented. All that is happening is that the message is now being changed. It sounds the same, but the influence behind it is a different influence. Get what the Word of God says. But in latter times, some shall fall away from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of demons. When the Bible says to us that even when we go through tribulation and through all these difficult times, God will be there to carry us through it. He says, you will not be tested beyond what you are able to bear. And God will come and pick you up and he'll carry you through the situation. The inference there is that there will be difficult times. Listen to Romans 6 verse 23. He says, for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in the Messiah. Not in the teaching of men, not in the ability and the fluency of men. You know, very often, me being English being my second language, I say to Pietro, if only I could speak as fluently and so as well as some of the guys that I hear ministering in English. Because when I listen back, I find all the grammar mistakes just the way it is. I'm in a hurry to say what I want to say. I'm not focusing on anything else except from what's coming from the heart. It is only afterwards that you pick up on the things, the way you say certain words. But then God speaks to me about that. It is not man that's called you. I have called you. It is not man that sent you to the UK. It was me sending you. And I'm saying, thank you, Lord, for that encouragement. You, need, you know, we need that. 
because it's easy for the enemy thinking about the scripture now to try and belittle you putting you on the back burner so that you'd feel insecure when once you get that going you've lost it so the wages of sin is death when you begin to change the teaching from the word of god into what is comfortable for you that is a sin and the word of god says the wage thereof is death so i want to put it out there important the enemy is the father of lies do you believe that john 8 verse 44 not only is a, a liar himself i just used the b section of the verse but he is also the father of all lies the enemy lies to you but he's the father of those lies he's the initiator He's the one putting it in the mouth of people. This is why the word of God says our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against all these powers in the air. So don't get angry at people. Begin to speak against the spirit that wants to move and operate through them. See what difference that'll make. When Yeshua spoke, he says, pray for your enemy. Pray for the enemy. How can I pray for my enemy? Actually, easy when I don't see the man as my enemy. It is what they do. Not only is he a lie himself, but he's also the father of all lies. The greatest deception is when Christians and believers trust more in the teaching of church institutions than in the word of God. And we've just heard the, the testimony about who do you bow your knee before? Some other statue or is it before God? And we have come into a, been lulled into how important the church is. And that is a church with a small little C. The body of Christ is important. Not the tradition of a church. We should always remember that. We got to get back to the word of God. We have a formidable enemy in the, in the devil. And the word of God is very clear when he says that he's the father of all lies. Salvation is in the Lord, not in any institution. No one can take you to heaven except through the blood of the Lamb. We are called to resist. Ephesians 4, 14. We must stop acting like children. We must not let deceitful people trick us by their false, false teachings, which are like winds that toss us around from place to place. It is amazing when I think about this portion in the Word of God. It isn't it? It is amazing how every couple of years something new all of a sudden, a new revelation starts rising up. And then I start listening to the content of that same revelation. And I find there's one scripture maybe that's been taken completely out of context. And a whole thing has been built around that idea. We need to get back to the word of God. And this is why I challenge you every time when I minister, when I say something, go to the scriptures, go to the word of God, see what I've said is actually in the word. Stop acting like children. I just love this translation to be fair, because this is immature very often as Christians. We look at people and we can't think that they have been serving the Lord for 30, 40 years, and they don't seem to grow anywhere. We are called to resist this, this deception. Now, I want to challenge you. Be bold. Be courageous. I could just quote a few scriptures on that one, couldn't I? In the book of Joshua, especially, three times God said to Joshua, because he knew Joshua is there to fill big shoes, big sandals, Moses's. So he had something weighing down his shoulder and God had to speak to him a few times. Say, listen, just be bold, be courageous. Hold on to what you have. The only way to fight the seed and false teaching is with the word of God. I cannot even begin to overemphasize that. It's the word of God that stops us from believing whatever you hear. You see, we've become very lazy, haven't we? We follow the teaching of men instead of the teaching of the Holy Spirit. We need to get into the word of God again. Don't believe everything you hear over TV. 
all the miracles you see? The Bible says to me very clearly, it says that in the last days, even in the time of tribulation, the Antichrist, the false prophet, will produce miracles that you would not believe is possible unless it is God. We need discernment now more than ever. Matthew, or rather 2 Timothy 3 verse 16. All scriptures breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, for training in righteousness. This is God's desire. In other words, he says, be bold, be courageous. All scriptures breathed out by God to be profitable for teaching. So in other words, what God is saying to us, be bold, be courageous. So when you receive a word from God and it is in the word of God, use it. Teach people around you. It, this is not a suggestion. It is a command to us. We need to train people up. And then when you see things isn't going in the way they should, when someone declares they're a child of God, reprove them. Give them correction with love. You don't judge them. You don't shout at them. You come and guide them onto the right path. It is our responsibility. But how do you do that unless you have the authority? Unless you've been there. You can hardly do that, can you? Never underestimate your influence. Now, Matthew 28, 20, another expectation. The, la the first portion, he says, teaching them to observe just some things, everything that I have commanded you. You see, this is not just what you like. God says everything that I command. So in other words, I need to make sure to know what God wants me to do. And then take that and teach people. Remember, there's a, there's a double, uh, double weight, if I could use the expression, on teachers. And we are all teachers in that sense. What is it that he teach people around you? Proverbs 29, 18. He says, when people do not accept divine guidance, it's a different translation again, but I thought this one spoke to me. When people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild, but Whoever obeys the law is joyful. And isn't that true? You look at the world now. Because they don't acknowledge the, the word of God, they are running wild. There's so much deceit there. Uh, I listen to people that I thought had something between the ears. And I can't believe they come up with what they come up with. Deceit. We need to be bold and courageous. Tried and tested methods that I want to impart into you very quickly. There's no better, more accurate and infallible source of godly instruction other than the Bible itself. This is why I make this statement. When I say something, test it against the word of God. That's the only way we can go about it. The practice of the ancient Bereans is a model of, for all who desire to grow spiritually today. The Bereans had a certain way of doing it. I'm fascinated when you, when you read about their history and, and you see the mentality of those people. These were Jews. Paul, after he's been chased out of uh, Thessalonica, he went to Berea. And when he got there, first thing he was looking for is a synagogue. I mean, he's a Jew, isn't he? So he wanted to speak to the Jews. And then they found these men that had an open mind. They wanted to hear what the word of God said. And the Bible's very clear that these guys measured everything to the prophet and the law, to the Torah. They were looking at the word of God for revelation, whether what has been said is true. Paul actually echoes that whole attitude in the book of Corinthians 
when he says, even when someone speaks in tongues, there should be someone to interpret it. When someone prophesies, let it be tested by the elders. Don't just take it. There's so many people I hear now that says the God, God had said, I said, okay, let's test it to the word. Many of them go silent after the date has come and gone. Acts 17, 11. Now these Jews, the Bereans, were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with, get this, all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. They didn't take Paul's word for it, whether there was miracles immaterial, that what he say match up with the word of God. And I believe this is where God wants to bring us, to this kind of place. The tried and tested method is, when people tell you something, test it. Go back to the word of God. How to download information. Now we're into the computer area. Eh? Make sure the source is safe. In other words, the place you get your information from. Make sure your source is safe. You see, we need to run the antivirus against all malware. This is why an antivirus is important. Because you can't see what is deceptively coming in in a Trojan horse, in this wooden horse coming into the town. You don't know. You don't see it. It is not that obvious. No wonder some of the viruses are called just that. So the antivirus is against malware. So in other words, the Holy Spirit is our defense. How will we know there's a problem unless we have the Holy Spirit that gives us discernment? See how important it is to continually be in contact with the Holy Spirit. Because I cannot know unless the Holy Spirit gives me that, what we used to call a check in the Spirit. You know, you just get something. The Lord shows us. But the definition of malware, listen to this. Software that is specifically designed to disrupt, damage, or gain unauthorized access to the computer system. That is the definition for that word. And I'm thinking, that's the enemy. Exactly. This is how he comes into your computer, into your software, how he influences it. You don't know about it, but he's so subtle. He comes, you start downloading something, watching a TV program that we shouldn't be, reading books we shouldn't be, sat down amongst people that we shouldn't be. And this sounds like Psalm 1. And now all of a sudden, everything is happening around us and we don't understand how it's happened. Well, your antivirus didn't clock in, did it? You didn't keep it updated. So something came in. You deliberately invited this spyware into your computer. So I thought that would give us a very good analogy of the spiritual life. So if you want to be guaranteed not to upload these things, get the Holy Spirit. Have that relationship because the Holy Spirit will then show you and guide you through the process. And then in close, just... Three points quickly. Three ways believers should apply themselves. The first one there, we need to make the word of God our only basis of truth and error. Don't trust man. We are fallible. Trust God. Matthew 25, 35 says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. It's amazing hey, when people come up with certain teachings and then 20, 30 years later, uh, you find out ah, there's a little bit of a misunderstanding. We just got to tweak it again. Uh, scientists saying, well, the earth is flat. While the Bible says, no, the earth is a sphere. And then they found out later that it is actually around because the guy went around the earth. And they say, well, you see, science proved it. No, no, no. You just proved the Bible right from the beginning. 
Science is all the time catching up with what God has made. God made it after all. But the word of God remains the same. That's what the Bible says. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a human who lies or a mortal who changes his mind. He's no man that he would lie. So when God says, this is it, then it is. We should have the courage and the boldness to keep on doing what God has called us to do. So we need to make the word of God our only basis for truth and error. The second point, we need to thoroughly search the scriptures when we have time. Daily. Daily. That's the only way. Uh, every time I start up the computer, it goes through a process of antivirus checking, but nothing comes in. And I get my get all the information when I need it. God is not human that he will lie or mortal that he would change his mind. When he says something, he will do it. When he makes a promise, guess what? He will fulfill it. Okay, we need to thoroughly search the scripture daily. It should be more than just a time of devotion, and I deliberately added this to it. It should also be a time to receive ration for the day. Now that your food package for the day is only received from the Lord. So it's not about devotion only, giving him glory, but also with an expectancy, Lord, give me what I need for today so that I can be built up. And sometimes you just need to wait in the queue. Uh, the English are good at that, isn't it? Queuing. <laughs> now, we should be more than a time of devotion. It should also be a time for us to receive what God has for us. John 4.34 says, Yeshua said to them, my food is to do what the one who sent me wants and to bring his work to completion. Now, you cannot do it unless you spend time with the Lord. Get this again. Yeshua said to them, my food is to do what the one who sent me wants me and to bring his work to completion. I find there's a lot of people that don't do that last part. The word might be food to them, but want to see how it benefits my empire. Can I grow my church? I'd rather not speak about things that might upset a few people. A few years ago, when we started to go according to the word of God and, and that which God has implanted into me from the middle of the 80s, and we never, never materialized really because God has his season. We lost people because of the truth. And we had to make up our mind. Will I rather offend God or have people to be offended by the truth? Now, the, there's no contest there, is there? The third and last point, be ready to resist all deception. Well, you wouldn't know when it's deception if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to show you. Psalm 19 verse 14 he says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. I want to challenge you. Make this scripture the one scripture for a month argument's sake that you start every day off with. This is the scripture that me, Peter and myself pray because we need to be in a situation where the words of my mouth, that which I say, need to be in line with the word of God and the intention of my heart, pleasing to God. In other words, it's not about what I want. It's about what God wants. So it's important that our meditation of our heart, the last scripture there, John 15, verse 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. This is Yeshua speaking. Ask whatever you will and it will be done for you. How often have you asked the question, why do my prayers not get answered? Have you asked those kind of questions? I have. But then the word takes me back to the scripture. The more time I spend with God, the more I know what the will and plan is of God. And this scripture says, actually, that when I pray anything in the will of God, it will be given me. 
So it's not about my plans, it's about God's plans. God has just the best plans for you. Isn't that amazing? So let us trust in him. Rubbish in, rubbish out. So it all depends on what we put in. The result of what I put in will be manifested. But if I put good stuff in, that's exactly what I will experience. Be careful what you download. Keep your antivirus up to date. Bible says, be filled with the Spirit daily. We need to be daily filled with the Spirit. Having that anointing on us. And then, of course, rely on the Holy Spirit and not on your own understanding. Now, I pray that you would have paid attention to the fact that we all need an antivirus. We all need to stand against the deception of the enemy, and you cannot do it unless you spend time with the Lord. And that very first scripture, 1 Timothy 4, one that we started off, for the Spirit saith expressly that in the latter time some shall fall away from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. <laughs>